Oh, that's good. That's good. Coffee and drones in the morning. You can't go wrong. So, uh, again, hi, I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. We're an official DJI dealer in the U.S. And so this morning we're going to do a quick video on how to avoid the dreaded DJI flyaway and or the crash. Uh, we're going to go through a few things now that are going to help you as a new pilot uh, avoid uh, some of your, your most basic crashes. Some of the things that we forget to check when we get in a hurry and we just uh, set it down and load up quickly and fly. Uh, sometimes we forget some of these variables. So uh, to help you become more familiar with that, we're going to share that with you now. So tip number one, probably one of the most important things that you need to do as a new pilot and as a more experienced pilot is to calibrate your compass. So each time you go out and fly, make it a habit to go ahead and calibrate your compass before you fly at a new location, uh, even if you're out going out to the, the same field every day. Uh, we, we know we've talked about this before. We have a, actually a compass calibration video you can watch that'll walk you through that. Just look in the list of videos that we have uh, on our channel and you'll see how to calibrate your compass. But very important to calibrate your compass each time when you go to fly and that'll save you a lot of headaches. Okay guys, now we're on to tip number two. Tip number two would be to avoid high voltage areas. You want to make sure that you're not flying around any power lines, uh, cell phone towers, possibly uh, radio towers, anything that you see that's, a, that's going to be a huge metal structure with uh, lots of satellite dishes on it. Make sure that you don't fly near any uh, large power stations as well as larger uh, satellite dishes as well. Uh, some of those direct satellite uh, um, feeds out into the air if this flies in front of it it can it can scramble what's going on inside um, for your for your compass or, or your main flight controller so you want to be really careful when you're flying in urban areas heavily densely populated urban areas uh, as well as uh, any municipal utility companies so uh, keep in mind that that can cause some issues Okay, we're moving on to tip number three, GoPros. If you have a GoPro on your Phantom and you don't have a proper FPV setup that's not gonna scramble your flight controller or, your, or mess with your compass, you wanna avoid using the Wi-Fi on your GoPro. So if you're trying to view your video through an app on your phone and you're using the local Wi-Fi from your GoPro, it has been known to cause some issues with the flight controller or the compass. So um, this is, uh, some people will say it does, some people will say it doesn't. So if you do use that, you are taking somewhat of a chance. Just want you to be aware of that, uh, that it can happen. So um, definitely want to avoid using Wi-Fi with the GoPro. Tip number four, stay in tune with the latest solar activity. You want to know what's going on, if there's any geomagnetic interference out there occurring in the atmosphere or there's any solar storms happening. You want to know what the latest weather for uh, or, or the forecast is before you go fly. So if you download an app to your phone or tablet, look up something in the Android store called SAM or Solar Activity Monitor. If you click on that, it'll give you the latest update on x-rays as well as the latest geomagnetic field. If it's looking unsettled, that means it's somewhere in the middle, class M flare, um, or if it's updated and this looks red, it'll say extreme. And if it's green, you're pretty much good to go. If it's in the orange mode, you're probably somewhere in the middle. So you know that there's some solar activity happening out there. So uh, be in tune with solar activity because it does affect how these things fly. A very, a very good idea to get in the habit of looking at this every once in a while. Tip number five, upgrade your DJI transmitter to another more robust system such as the DX9 
by Spectrum or the Futaba 14SG. You can also upgrade the antenna on your DJI transmitter to a, a more robust one, which will give you longer range and a better connection to your Phantom so that you don't lose signal. Um, they have these antennas that are great called a helical antenna. You can get these in kits and install them yourself or do it with a little help from a friend. Uh, but that's definitely a good tip for, for guys out there that want a better connection and a, a more robust transmitter you can do an upgrade because it is compatible with the Phantom. Tip number six, fly within range. You want to stay within line of sight with your Phantom. If you go out of the line of sight, you're kind of taking a risk to have a flyaway or, or an experience where you lose signal. If you lose signal and you have no way of seeing where it's at, uh, it's really hard to go and find your Phantom. So uh, if you have no idea where it went down or what direction it took off in, it's a good idea to keep a line of sight on your Phantom when you're flying. So very important, try not to fly around the other side of large structures such as buildings or uh, radio towers. If you fly in between you and something else, it can cause some issues or interference uh, or loss of signal. So be very conscious and try to fly within line of sight. Tip number seven, try not to overfly your battery. If you fly past the 30% level, make sure you come back and land as soon as possible. If you get down to 15% level, the critical battery level, you're probably starting to stress out some of the cells in the battery, and that's gonna happen uh, to shorten your, your lifetime, your ex lifetime expectancy of your battery. So if you fly it a lot and you stress the battery, the cells in the battery packs get a little bit upset and what happens is the battery will start to swell and that'll mean that the battery life of your is, is greatly shortened. So make sure that you don't overfly your battery, bring it back at 30% and you're going to have a much better longer uh, flying battery. You're going to get a lot more charges out of your battery. Tip number eight. Learn to fly in NASA M mode. If you learn to fly in NASA M mode, if you have an issue where you lose orientation or you need to come back to the home plate, look over to the S2 switch, switch down in home lock, and pull back on the stick and bring that baby back to the home point. Uh, try not to use the return to home function by turning off the radio, the transmitter, uh, as your first option to get it back to you at the home plate. Uh, very important that you, you learn how to fly NASA M mode. So home lock is a very, very useful uh, mode for the Phantom. So if you're out doing some video and you're out a couple hundred yards and you can just barely see your Phantom, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great idea to flip back into home lock and bring it back to home. Tip number nine, guys, have some patience. Let the home point load. When you set your Phantom down, give it a solid 30 to 45 seconds to load the satellites. You wanna have at least seven satellites to go fly. So have a little bit of patience when you're loading up. Let the home point load. Don't just set it down and fly it off within five to 10 seconds. I've seen people do that, really not a good idea. So if you don't have seven satellites, you want to be very cautious if you go to fly and realize that you can't fly in GPS mode if you're under six satellites or less. So very important that you let the, the home point load. Okay, tip number 10. When you're calibrating your compass, do not have your cell phone near it or on and in close proximity to the compass because this will mess up your compass calibration procedure. So very important when your phantom loads up as well, when you're loading up the home point, keep your phone back away from it a little bit. And then once you have a good satellite connection, uh, go ahead and set up your phone uh, with your, your DJI app, uh, clip it to your radio and you should be good to go. But during any loading procedures, make sure that you have your cell phone well away from it, uh, maybe back sitting by your car or uh, the, the, the park bench. So definitely a good idea to keep this away from the Phantom during the loading procedure. Moving on to tip number 11. This is gonna be about FPV mode. 
Try not to rely on first-person view of your copter and its orientation to you. Uh, learn to fly just around the field without looking at the monitor. Don't use your monitor as a reference. Learn how to fly your Phantom from any different given orientation. That way, if you lose signal on your FPV monitor, you're going to have a much better chance of bringing it back to the home uh, plate by knowing how to fly without the assistance of FPV. So very important for each pilot to learn uh, flying without your monitor and, and looking at your monitor to, to locate your orientation of the helicopter. Tip number 12, don't load up your Phantom next to any large metal objects, structures, uh, parking decks, cars, uh, huge uh, chain link fences near baseball fields, or, or anything that might have some sort of electromagnetic interference, interference that will, could cause your flight controller to go batty. So very important to uh, stay away from large metal objects with your Phantom. Tip number 13, avoid flying your Phantom in high winds. If you fly in high winds and you have a situation where return to home mode activates, if you're 100 feet up in the air or more, it might not make it back to the home point in time before the battery runs out. If you're way out there and there's a high wind, it might not make any, any bit of uh, progress to get back to home because it might actually not, not fly uh, correctly. So remember, when you show up at an airfield and it looks like it's pretty calm on the ground, Remember that 100 feet in the air, it might be double the wind speed of what you get on the ground. So if you have a wind meter and you check the wind and you see that it's 10 to 12 on the ground, it could be 24 up top. So just keep in mind that this can occur. Uh, you don't want to have a situation where you're way out there, return to home activates, and then you can't make it back to home in time before the battery runs out and it just falls out of the air. So uh, keep in mind distance um, to battery ratio and, and your wind and weather is very, very important to flying. Last but not least is pre-flight checklist. Go over your Phantom every once in a while, look at it, make sure that the compass is on correctly, make sure that it hasn't shifted or become loose, uh, that your cables are seated properly. Check out your gimbal every once in a while, feel your motors to make sure that they're nice and loose uh, and not obstructed with sand or other debris. Check your propellers before taking off. Uh, if you look up on YouTube, there are some great videos out there on pre-flight checklists for the Phantom. Uh, go over your Phantom each time before you fly, and it might save you a headache uh, or a crash uh, in the near future for sure. So do those pre-flight checklists before you fly. So that's it. That's a pretty good list to get you started with to avoiding the Phantom flyaway. If you're a new pilot or you're experienced, uh, if you have some information or you'd like to share with us or share with our viewers, please click below and make a comment and add to our list of flyaway uh, uh, tips and, and tricks for, for avoiding this. So very helpful that we have the community all involved with this and we can share with each other uh, our, our own ideas to avoid the flyaway. So thanks again for watching. I'm Justin Davis of Drone Camps RC. Please subscribe.